Okay, good. I was about to say good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to our continuation of our This or That series. If you missed out, we did another series last month that is recorded and available on our YouTube channel, which I will mention at the end of this presentation. And this is kind of the first of our next this or that series, I'll be doing another one on some additional reptiles and amphibians next week if you care to join for that one. But today we're going to jump into looking at some commonly confused snakes. That's the premises behind the this or that title is comparing and contrasting commonly confused or misnamed species. So if you have not joined us previously, just a quick introduction. I am Lara Milligan. I'm the natural resources agent for UF IFAS Extension in Pinellas County. I am stationed up at Brooker Creek Preserve. And just a little bit about my background. I also attended the University of Florida as well. I did my undergrad and master's there with a focus on natural resource conservation, forestry, and environmental education. And I also am a graduate of the Florida Natural Resources Leadership Institute. And I'm happy to talk to anyone who might be interested in that program offline, highly, highly recommend it. Quick kind of disclaimer, as part of Extension, we are federally funded through the university. So we have federal, state and local funding to make us possible. And as such, we have to follow certain requirements, one of which is a non-discrimination effort. Um, so if you feel that we are discriminating in any way, shape, or form, please file a complaint. Um, and you can do that directly on the USDA website. Also, again, I, I assume, but don't want to assume, <laughs> that most people are familiar with Zoom by now. But if you are joining us for the first time on Zoom, there are audio settings. If you're having difficulty hearing me, you can check and make sure the correct speaker is selected. Um, you don't have to worry about your microphone or, or video or anything. We have turned that off for you. There should also be a Q&A feature on your screen. That is where you will go. If you have a question during my presentation, click that, type in your question and submit it. And it won't show up on anybody else's screen but my own. And it will kind of log them for me throughout the presentation. But I will not address those until the end of the presentation. I may also interact with you guys via the chat feature if you want to participate in that way. So you can click on the chat icon and type in your responses there. And then um, if you need closed captioning, it should already be on your screen. Zoom is always changing the settings. So if there's issues with that, please let us know. There should be a live transcript button on your screen. If you wanna turn it off, you can make the font bigger or smaller or whatever your preference is there. Okay, so for today, we are focusing on snakes. So thank you for lunch and learn to learn about snakes. I had somebody comment on our Facebook. They were like, this sounds interesting, but I would never attend a presentation about snakes. So, because <laughs> she was very scared of them. So these are the species comparisons that we are gonna do today, looking at what we're broadly calling the Southern water snake to kind of encompass all water snakes versus the water moccasin, also known as the cottonmouth. Eastern coral snake versus the scarlet king snake, the juvenile eastern racer versus the dusky pygmy rattlesnake. And I know this is a lot of words. We'll focus in on these in just a minute. The eastern indigo snake versus the southern black racer. And then I threw in a little surprise at the end to kind of keep you hooked on here. Um, I do expect this to be a relatively brief presentation. Again, I like to keep them shorter for our lunch and learn series. So this series is inspired by an actual hard copy field guide that me and my colleague James Stevenson created. So this is kind of pulling out the snake comparisons that are in this guide and sharing them with you. If you care to get this and a ton more plants and animals, you can purchase a copy of the guide. I do not benefit from this personally. It goes into our natural resource programming funds to help us do more awesome things in the future. So you can get that. You can order online through the UF IFAS bookstore, or it's also available at our two satellite office locations at Whedon Island Preserve down in St. Pete and Burker Creek Preserve up in Tarpon Springs. Okay, I know you're like, get to the point, Lara. Okay, so here we are. We are starting our first species comparison. This is looking at, maybe you already know. So again, broadly, we're calling the Florida water snake at the top and contrasting it with the water moccasin 
also known as the cottonmouth. And this is the venomous species. This is why we really like to highlight and stress this comparison because it's very important to know if you're encountering a snake that's venomous or not. So we'll kind of zoom in and look at some characteristics to help you figure that out. So one thing that you can look for is the head shape. Typically it is said that with pit vipers, which is what the category that the water moccasin falls into, they have this kind of large blocky triangular shaped head and they will say it typically has a distinct neck compared to the water snake. And we'll see another picture in a minute where it's kind of just like the body goes right into the head. There's not as much as a distinguishing neck compared to the moccasin. So you can look for the large blocky head that might say, oh, that might be a water moccasin. Then if you're like, okay, maybe you can look at these next features. One is looking at the kind of coloration along the whole head. The main thing that you want to hone in on for any water snake species that we have, and we have several <clears throat> throughout the state, are these vertical lines that run along the lower jaw of the snake. And if you look over at the water markets and you can see those vertical lines are absent and they have a more distinguishing characteristic, which is this eye stripe that kind of goes through their eye. You see how that coloration even goes into the um, color there in the eye. So this distinct round eye stripe is a key characteristic for the water moccasin and another species we will look at in a minute that is also venomous. So those two kind of patterns you can note. And one other thing we like to point out, but we stress, please don't get close enough to the snake to look at their pupils and determine if they have a round pupil or a slit pupil. <laughs> Perhaps if you have binoculars and you can make note of that, great. Otherwise, please use the other things that I've mentioned before. So you can note the round people on the Florida water snake, non-venomous. The water moccasin has the slit vertical pupil. Again, that would put you in that category of being venomous. When we look at the overall body of these two species, the, they're both patterned in some way. The water moccasin is more patterned as a juvenile. They're very, very, you might even be like, what kind of snake is that? Because it looks very different when they're juvenile compared to adults. When they are adults, they'll be almost completely solid black. If you look really closely, you'll see some hints of the patterns, but um, this is kind of one that's, you know, I don't know, maybe a teenager, <laughs> if you will. So you can still see some patterning, but it's, it is starting to get a little bit darker, at least like along the top. The water snake, some people also call this a banded water snake because sometimes they do have this pattern of bands along their body. This one also has much more patterning when they're young compared to when they are more mature adults. But here again, you can kind of note that big blocky head I was talking about on the water moccasin on the left, the brown eye stripe. And then you can kind of see how the neck just really goes into the head. There's not a real distinguishing head on the water snake here. Okay, so hopefully you know this is by far the number one snake comparison that I see and hear people confuse or that I get the most questions about. So I wanted to include it right up front. Okay, let me make sure. I'm going to just open the chat. Okay, so our next species comparison is one that I feel like is, you know, I feel like even kids learn about this as well. So perhaps you've learned it. I'm hoping I'm going to teach you a new trick if you don't know this one already. So we have the eastern coral snake at the top. This is our venomous snake species. Compared to the scarlet king snake, there are other king snakes that do not look like this that we have in Florida as well. That's, again, kind of one of the issues with common names. But we're going to focus in on how to tell these two apart. So if you know you're dealing with the venomous one or not. The color pattern, we've probably all heard the rhymes, you know, red on black, friend of Jack, red on yellow, kill a fellow. I don't even know if I just said that right. That's the issue with the rhyme is like, you could really insert any word and make it so that it's a good thing when it's not or vice versa. So I really don't stress that rhyme. If you've got it down, good for you. What we like to stress in extension is this idea of a stoplight. So when we're looking at the color pattern, if yellow, turns to red, stop. That's a venomous snake. So you can see here, there's yellow right on red with the venomous eastern coral snake. And you can see the yellow and red are separated by bands of black on the scarlet king snake. 
Now, if that's not something that you can remember, uh, and I apologize for the pixelation here, I tried to zoom in. You can look just at the snout, if this happens to be easier for you to remember, the snout of the coral snake is black, contrasting with the red snout of the scarlet king snake. So perhaps you get a good glimpse of the head and that's the characteristic that you remember. That's another way that you can tell these two apart. Now it's, it's pretty rare that you're gonna see, honestly, either of these species, the coral snakes are very, they like to hide down in the leaf litter. I've been at the preserve for 11 plus years and I have never seen one here. <laughs> so um, if you get to see one, it's a special, special treat and just enjoy it from a safe distance. Okay, next species comparison is the juvenile Eastern racer. It has all sorts of common names, black racer. Some people just call it a racer. Believe it or not, this is what we all know as the black racer. This is what they look like as juveniles. So perhaps you didn't know that, but this is a really good picture. I think that highlights the pattern and coloration of them. And contrasting that with our pygmy rattlesnake. And you can see they kind of have similar patterns and see how they could be confused. Rattlesnakes are venomous. Even our pygmy rattlesnake, a lot of people think just because it's a smaller rattlesnake that it might not be as venomous. That's absolutely not true. So again, we can look at the pupils from a safe distance using binoculars. You can see it's very, very clear on the black racers. I think they're adorable because they have these giant eyes compared to the size of their head. So round pupil compared to the slit pupil on the pygmy rattlesnake. And again, if you remember back to the water moccasin or the cotton mouth, that eye stripe that went through the eye. So that's the same with the pygmy rattlesnake, that kind of band runs all the way through the eye. So it's almost like, where is the eye? <laughs> it's a good camouflage feature that they have. Size is another helpful characteristic. So in general, the black racers are gonna be skinnier compared to kind of the more stout, thick bodies of the pygmy rattlesnake. And then, I can't remember if it's on this next slide. Okay, so yeah, the other feature that you can look for is just the appearance of the scales on these snakes, either as juveniles or adults. So again, I'm just trying to make it, make it clear. This is what the black racers look, look like as juveniles. And this is what we probably are more familiar with and seeing in our yards and landscapes. But you can see here how smooth these scales are. It's a very, very sleek, shiny looking snake. Contrasting with, you can see a more rough appearance on the scales of the pygmy rattlesnake and a much duller appearance as well. These aren't going to be super shiny. Perhaps unless they like just shed, it might look a little bit more shiny and bright in color. We often say, so we have a lot of pygmy rattlesnakes at the preserve and we often tell people to look for a, a chocolate chip cookie on the ground because they are often coiled up like this in a circle and we, the coloration and pattern look like little chocolate chips. So perhaps you can go looking for chocolate chip cookies the next time you come for a hike here at the preserve. Okay, our next species comparison and a, a pretty obvious one why they could be confused is the black racer. Again, we're now looking at the adult of the black racer compared to the Eastern indigo snake, another large black snake. The key thing that we want to note for the indigo snake, if you were not aware, is that it is a threatened species in the state. So it is very, very rare to see one. Um, another species that I have never seen. I couldn't tell you how many black racers I've seen. Um, so if you ever get to see an indigo snake, it's a very, very special treat, but I will help you to differentiate between the two in case you are blessed with seeing one. So. The head of these species, you can see they look relatively similar in terms of just overall appearance. But when we look at the color and specifically looking at the chin, kind of the underside of their head, it's a, it's a little hard to see here, but there's a white stripe here. So the underside of the chin on the black racer is white compared to the Eastern indigo snake that kind of has this like orangish reddish color really on the overall head, but um, especially on the underside portion here. So you can look for that color. Again, if you just get a quick glimpse and you're like, what did I just see? Did you see a flash of white or red? That can be helpful. 
when we are talking about size, so eastern indigo snakes are the largest snake that we have, I believe, yes, in North America. Okay, so these are huge, up to six feet these can get. The black racer, on the other hand, typically maxes out at like four and a half feet. So if you're seeing a giant, giant black snake, that can also put you into the indigo snake category. They tend to be a little bit more thick bodied as well compared to the black racer. So if those are helpful for you, they do get their name indigo from when they're mature, the scales in the right light really do have like this shiny indigo color to them. So and you can kind of see it like right on this head, it's like shining off a little bit rainbow colored here. Now, I mentioned before that the Eastern Indigo snake is a threatened species. So this is, was the best map that I could find showing kind of like the most recent data. So post 2000, these are observations of the indigo snake throughout the state. Black are like verified specimens, typically dead, um, that then go to a museum. The uh, pink color is a, an observation that was reported by somebody who's in like the land management field or environmental field. So you can see I'm stationed at Brooker Creek. So there have been some reports here. So I, I'm happy to say that we might have them here at the largest remaining natural area in Pinellas County. I again, have never been fortunate enough to see one, but perhaps in the years to come. Okay, and then this is your bonus species comparison that I wanted to throw in there. And I'll tell a funny story about this, but these two snake species you can see really don't look very similar. And I'll, there's several ways that these two get confused. One is simply just by their common name, which there's all sorts of different common names for both of these species. We try to snick, stick with what we have here on the screen, which is the Eastern rat snake is the one on the top. Some people call this a yellow rat snake. And then the Eastern corn snake on the bottom some people refer to this as a red rat snake. So the color alone is often what people will refer to and, and that's fine. I'm just kind of showcasing that these are in fact two distinctly different species. With the Eastern rat snake though, as juveniles, you could see on the top left picture here that they do have more of a pattern that is similar to the corn snake. So you can see how people might be confused between the two. These are both non-venomous species. This is just a little bonus to help clarify which species is which. As they mature and get older, those patterns fade and they get more of this long vertical stripes, or I guess I should say horizontal, stripes that run along the length of their body. <laughs> and you can see that here. And then they get this pretty yellow tan color along the rest of their body. They are very, very good at climbing, as you can see in this picture here, and as well as the Eastern corn snake too. They're both very, very good climbers, but you can see the patterning is very, very different. They do not get the stripes that we saw with the other species. The underside, if you're ever unsure, or again, you just catch a glimpse, if you get to see the underside of the belly of the Eastern corn snake, it has a very distinct, it almost looks like old corn um, that we might be familiar with, the kind of patterning here. There's different explanations for where they actually get that common name corn snake, but I do like to say the underside of the belly does have the appearance of corn. Um, so sometimes you might be able to get a glimpse of that, especially if they are climbing up in some vegetation or on a fence, probably places you may or may not want them. This is a picture here at Brooker Creek Preserve. Oh, so the funny story, I was trying to find pictures for this species and me and my staff are like, I know we have some, we have to have some. We do see the yellow rat snake more often than the corn snake. However, right after, literally the next day, I was like, we don't have any pictures of this. My colleague saw on her drive-in one going right across the street. So I was like, ask and you shall receive. So again, I keep these nice and short and sweet, but the comparisons that we went over are all on your screen here. And I will mention some resources in just a minute where you can go back and reference if you're ever like, oh, what did Lara say? How do I tell these two apart? 
there's plenty of resources out there for you. This will also be available for you as well. So additional resources. One is in the form of a blog. If you like to reference materials in more of like a reading format versus a video or recording, we have a blog specific to commonly confused snakes in Central Florida. So you can search for that on our blogs.ifis.ufl.edu website. I mentioned before that we record and archive a lot of our webinars on our YouTube channel. So we have created within the channel, we have a playlist specific to this or that. And these are short two to three minute videos that basically take exactly what I just did and break them up into the different species comparisons. If you just need a quick reference that way, you can just search for Pinellas County Extension YouTube and you should find us there. You can also subscribe and get notified when we do upload new videos. I mentioned before, if you want a different version to go back and reference, we do have the field guide. I have it here. You probably won't be able to see because of the screen setting, but we have hard copies of the field guide that you can purchase as well if you're interested in learning this and a lot more. The irony of this as well, um, I do have a podcast. It's called Naturally Florida that I co-host with my colleague in Polk County. We release an episode every month and Ironically, this month we will be releasing an episode on snakes. So if you want to subscribe to our podcast or just check us out on your podcast platform of choice, we would love to have you as a listener there. <laughs>